This is Mark Hamill, everybody. This is a dream come true for me. Uh, even before I remember watching television, they would bring comic strips and lay them on my doorstep. I couldn't read, but I loved the pictures. And I always dreamed I'd be a cartoonist when I grew up, you know, cutting out peanut strips, the women in Little Abner. Uh, a few fellow travelers out there. I'm gonna try and save my voice. Basically, this is a story of a, of a man trying to discover why, at this advanced age, he is still so enamored of something everyone else tells him he should have outgrown many moons ago. So, I feel like, um, I can't really do a documentary about the Comic Con, just a, you know, a, Ken Burns Civil War kind of thing about what we all love so much, but I did feel, can you hear me? Because tonight, you all are a character in this film. Yes. And let me tell you something, for years people would say to me, because they know I'm a fan, they know I read and have even written a few comics and was a fan way before anything I did that was connected to science fiction as an actor, or the Joker or, or Luke or, or Amazing Stories or, and that was, if you saw the Amazing Stories, I couldn't believe, I'm reading this thing going, I can't believe this. Everyone says, oh, that was written about you. <laughs> but here's what's really special about this. Mostly every part in this movie, speaking role is, is Play, are, are being played by people that really mean something to me. People that I've worked with and people that I really love. I call them the most talented, brilliant actors you've never heard of. And I'm talking about people like Billy West. Yes. And they're all gonna come out here. It's not, I mean, we're gonna have a portion here for you because I think you deserve a show. Um, so they're going to perform for you, Billy West, Jess Harnell, Roger Rose, Jim Cummings, Rob Paulson, Maurice LaMarche. I mean, they're, they're hundreds of your favorite cartoon characters, and they're all going to come out here and have a lot of fun. You know what? Uh, one more thing I would say is the Comic-Con has been so good to me. They knew I came to Comic-Con way before George's movies, way before, you know, playing... Batman's arch nemesis. So, listen, <laughs> I really want to do the laugh. <laughs> yes. But one thing that they said to me, and you know it altered my character, because originally I was going to be a filmmaker, a filmmaker embittered because he was fired as second unit director on Free Willy Five. And it's actually satirizing movies when, in fact, what I wanted to talk about was comic books. And when I went to the con, they had reservations. They said, we don't want you in the costume competition because we want to protect, you know, the patrons. They want to express themselves. We don't want you doing Trekkies and making snarky remarks about whatever. I said, that's so not me. You know, I mean, if anything, I am you. Goo 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 -joob. Um, and, and it, it made me go back and rethink the whole thing. And that's why I became sort of a doppelganger for Peter David here. A, uh, <laughs> well, not, that, that's not even fair. It's like early Roy Thomas. He's a high school teacher who supplements his income with a mail order golden age comic book service. He sells a couple of comic book stories and, uh, and has not been to a con since I'm basing it on the first con I ever went to was the Ambassador Hotel in the early 70s. Anybody remember that one? It was, yeah, it was like 15, 16 dealers, one 16 millimeter projector. And the only reason I went is in the college newspaper, I went, wow, they're showing Metropolis and M and things to come, all these movies I'd never seen except in Famous Monsters. Stills. So off I went. 
and you know that was a turning point because I saw all of these comic books. How many times have you seen the pre people going, "Oh, I had that one and that one and that one." What happened? My mom threw them away. <laughs> it's about the passion and the love that we have for these what my dad called funny books. <laughs> So have fun. I know you're going to love what, what you see. When we finish with this, this thing, it's going to be the biggest love letter to us. Us. Ever. Because they have said for years, aren't those sci-fi fans kind of weird? And I say, look, you know, if they are so in touch with their fantasy life, they probably save thousands of dollars in therapy. Have fun! Mark Hamill, ladies and gentlemen. The man who's one of the marvelous stars of Futurama, Ren City, and so many cartoons, the great Billy West. When did I last see you at dinner? I think it was dinner last night, wasn't oh, it? Oh, that was a good <coughs> dinner. <clears throat> remember remember uh, Jeffrey Dahmer's wonderful book, My Dinner Was Andre. <laughs> no such thing as uh, old jokes, just new ideas. I'm not here to cause the CSC or the SS sensation. Talking about my G or the G or the my peer group. All right, Billy, stay up here. We're going to bring all you up at the same time. Our next guest, ladies and gentlemen, of course, you've seen him and heard him on Animaniacs, Butt Ugly Martians, so many things. Jess Harnell, the great Jess Harnell. Come on up, Jess. And then we're going to get all these guys up here together. There he is, Jess. Uh, hello, my name is Ozzy Osbourne. How are you? <laughs> I, I, I just want to say that I think you're all freaking mad, you know, but I'm glad that you're here. Let's get crazy! Right? <laughs> Look, it's Mr. Microphone. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Jess Harnell. Thank you, Jess. And this wonderful gentleman, you know him, of course, from VH1, from a number of motion pictures, including, of course, Ski Patrol, the great Roger Rose. Roger! <laughs> many, many great cartoon voices. Why, thank you, Gary. Yes, Gary Owens, ladies and gentlemen. Gary rocks! He's, Gary does rock. He's not the real thing. He's an animatron at Disneyland, and you'll be seeing him weekly. Thank you, Gary. You know, sometimes I look at you people. You make me mad. I'd like to come to your house, sniff your wallpaper. Oh, oh. oh. so we also are going to bring up in a couple minutes the biggest names in animation, I'm talking big time. SpongeBob SquarePants is here, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Winnie the Pooh. Woo, 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 woo. Woo. Oh my God. Uh, Pinky. Uh, Pinky and the Brain. <laughs> Hi -oh. brainless. Brainless. Richard Simmons. No, I'm wrong about that. I'm sorry about that. All right. Uh, <laughs> I just love him. So, Scott Zacharin, ladies and gentlemen, who just. What, you gonna talk? Ladies and gentlemen, the big cheese, the head Hello. of Creative Light Pictures. He's the man, he's the legend. Let's hear it for Scott Zacharin. Um, also, I want to introduce one of our character actors. We're gonna be, during the movie, we're gonna have a bunch of our character actors, but one of our character actors, who's kind of a legend in the comic book industry, I had to get him up here on the panel, Peter David's over there. Hold on, okay, the one voice I do. Hi ho, Kermit the Frog here, and everybody, welcome to the San Diego Comic Con! Yeah! <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. 
<laughs> also, I'm going to about to announce that we are going to be a new doing a new movie with these guys right here. It's an animated movie that has actually in is in production. Mark is actually going to be the narrator. It's called Aero Troopers. We're going to show you a quick, first time ever exclusive clip of this film. It has none of their voices yet because we didn't do that part. Do you know something, Scott Zachary? I've that? never seen any of these movies you make, but I hear they're marvelous. I hear they're just wonderful. You're not alone. Well, you, okay. You look so sensitive, and that's what I love about you. I do. Uh, let's roll the tape. He is truly a legend. I'm going to bring up all these people, but I have to say, I've known this man since I'm 18 years old, and uh, the charges were lifted. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm joking. You, Gary used to be a priest. Isn't that what you're saying? <laughs> yes, that's right. Yeah. That's saying. I don't make the news. I just report it. Knock it off. Right. He is truly a legend, and we are honored to have him here. Indeed. Right. Oh, it's my pleasure to be here. Right? Roger Thank Ramjet. You. Gary Owen. Yes. Uh, we want to, first person we want to bring up also, there's all these great people here. So oh my God, you, you guys. We'll do life and you can ask questions. Uh, Tom Kenny, who you may know as SpongeBob SquarePants, Mr. Yeah. Show, and he's in our movie, Mr. Tom Kenny, ladies and gentlemen. Tom Kenny! Uh, I want you to be very honest. How many people are here just because you've been walking around all day and your feet hurt and you need a place to sit down? <laughs> Don't humor us. All right. Well, thanks. Uh, we, uh, does anybody know why we're here? We're just farting around. That's what we're doing. And you're all here, and we're all a part of it. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. Wait, I can do it better. Wait till Maurice gets up here. The great thing about us is that we're actually making money doing the same stupid junk you did when you were in second grade. <laughs> okay, Billy, here's your check. Don't spend it all in one place. <laughs> Uh, thanks very much, and uh, ay, 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 ay. that's all I have to say. Hey, Tom. <laughs> you know, it's amazing how much Tom looks like Buddy Holly. That's right. Have you noticed? Our, now, you've seen pictures of Buddy Holly. He looks exactly ay, like Buddy ay. Holly, the way Buddy looks today. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be cruel. Um, <laughs> Nobody's allowed the next gentleman it. we're bringing up is uh, one of the giants in our industry. He is Winnie the Pooh. He is Tigger. Oh, yeah. He is the Tasmanian Devil. He is Jim Cummings. Hey, Jim. He is in the bathroom. All right. He's also the voice of every movie Here promo comes. that you've ever heard. Jimmy Cummings. Jim, Jim Cummings. All people got to sit in the back. I tried to sneak in. I didn't know. I thought I wasn't going to be up here for another hour. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brother. <laughs> I was this close to a clean getaway, but they keep pulling me back. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you going to do? <laughs> and if Taz were here, he'd say, it's really great to <laughs> all of you. <laughs> so I don't know what I'm doing. I don't even see my name. I think I should be. Chair, no oh, is that okay? Yeah, pull up a chair. I thought it was Jim. off duty. Don't you want Jim up here? No, no, no. I just thought it was off duty. Yeah. We need Jim. Roger, I'll be in the cheap seats. <laughs> here's your name. Here's your name. Yeah. Jim. Uh, here, Jim. Jim, here's your name. Wait, if, uh, Roger, can, can I do the next intro? Would you mind? Please, baby. All right. This next guy we're gonna bring up is not only one of the absolute. <laughs> see? I love him. And he's so cute too. <laughs> The, the next guy we're going to bring up is, uh, is not only one of the greats of the voiceover industry and has been on every cartoon known to man, he is also my big brother from Animaniacs. I have the privilege of calling this man family. I am Wacko, he is Yakko. Let's say hello to Rob Paulson. I get paid American dollars for that. <laughs> Thank you so much. This is really, honest to God, this is like, yeah. this is so great to be on this, uh, this same 
Deus here with all these incredible, great people. We've all worked together at various times, and we've done time together at various <laughs> times. And in various ways. It yes. really, truly is uh, a, a joy. Thank you so much for coming out here. We're going to have a really good time, and, um, and thank you so much again, and hello, Comic-Con. <laughs> nice Rob Paulson. Rob Paulson, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Rob, for dressing up. All right. I know. And now, what would Pinky be without the brain, ladies and gentlemen? Maurice LaMarche! Pinky, are you pondering what I'm pondering? <laughs> well, I think so, Brain, but if Jimmy cracks corn and nobody cares, why does he keep doing it? <laughs> no, Pinky, our plan for world domination. We have harnessed all this great voiceover power to create a cartoon which will cause all of you to come under our sway, allowing us to be ushered into the White House and therefore take over the world. <laughs> I want to thank Mark Hamill for asking me to be here tonight. My name is Maurice, and I am an alcoholic. Um, nice call. Where's the high Maurice? Thank you very much. And also a recovering stand-up comedian, and I'm not going to take too much time here. I just, I just want to say, I was, watching, I was listening to the news today and watching it, and all these, uh, all these old fart actors um, are going to put something through Congress now that they want, they want ageism to come to an end in Hollywood because nobody's hiring people over 40 or 50. And I just have two words for them. Voiceovers. <laughs> nobody no. can hear you get old, nobody can hear you get fat. No, you don't. <laughs> Thanks, Squad. I'm Squad Patrol, and he is one of the big heroes in our fine movie, the legendary, the handsome, the suave, the boner, Darren Norris. Yeah. As you can tell, I'm here for security reasons. Uh, I thought it was a SWAT panel. Uh, contrary to popular opinion, I'm a fairy! <laughs> but that's uh, not for publication, Timmy. Yay! How doing? Do we miss anybody? <laughs> yes, he got, in a, he got rear ended um, and he, yesterday, and he's on painkillers, which we all want to borrow. Right. And uh, so an extra hand for Darren for showing up. Yeah, yes, this. indeed. Ah. And he'll be selling drugs in the lobby. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Darren it's is pure the coffee. wild card. Uh, the wild card of the panel. That's it, baby. Um, I also want to mention Billy is, uh, you know, doing Bugs Bunny for Warner Brothers. And uh, you want to talk a little bit about that? Well, they're doing some short subjects. Uh, they're reviving the old cartoons before the movies. Subject, yeah. And, uh, you know, when you're coming in with your popcorn and stuff... Uh, Tell me the yellow one. Oh, here's a story for you. You all saw Spider-Man, of course. How about that? How about that actor, J. Jonah Jameson, the actor that played him? Right. Yes. All right. Listen to this. He, uh, I've worked with him on several occasions, but there was one time when Oz was a new program on HBO. I hadn't seen it yet. I flew back to New York, and my wife said, uh, "You got to watch Oz. Have you not seen Oz?" I go, "No, I haven't. I'm looking forward to it." She said, "There's this one guy in the prison." And he is no actor. He's drawing upon something very, very deep and dark. And I said, you're kidding me. He's like, look at his choices. Those are not like actor choices. That's real psycho stuff. <laughs> and, and then comes up the scene because they show everything a million times on HBO. I'm watching and watching. She goes, here, watch. Look, right there. Look at this guy. Look at this guy. And I go, <laughs> I go, I know that guy. She goes, you do? I go, yeah, he's the yellow m, &M. <laughs> Billy, before but but you, he uh, played J. Jonah Jameson in Spider-Man. That's J.K. Simmons. There you go. I'm going to have Billy do something that uh, I don't know if he, he's done it before you before. But back in 1983, I was looking over a list of people on the Walk of Fame in Hollywood, which is a very prestigious thing. And I noticed that the Three Stooges did not have a star, despite the fact they've been stars forever. So I sponsored them, got them a star. They had like... 
10,000 people at the event, and it was such a magic moment. I had Milton Berle come out, Jamie Farr, Henry Gibson. All the Hollywood Squares, in other words. Were Everybody right. on the Hollywood Squares. <laughs> exactly. Remember when Kate Circle Smith... Circle gets the square! <laughs> no, Kate Smith, Orson Welles, and Dom DeLuise were on the top square, and it fell in and killed everybody. <laughs> uh, but the reason I bring this up, I wanted Billy to do the Three Stooges for you, because I've been a Three Stooges fan forever, and I'm so pleased. I hope you are, too. Billy, do a few Stooges for us. Oh, okay. Go, Bill. Hey, Mo, it's a whorehouse. Good, pick out two. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mo, I pissed on my shoe. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mo, I broke your face sock dishes. <laughs> Why, you idiot? Come here, this is the meat, this is the dairy. <laughs> Hey, you missed one, Mo. No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I think we really were us, ladies that. and gentlemen. We all learned how to hit people with frying pans and stick your fingers in someone's eyes, thanks to the Three Stooges. <laughs> I hear we have questions, but, and I see you guys here. Before, we, we would be remiss. We need some beauty on this panel, other than you, Mr. Owens, of course. Yes, thank well, you. Yes. Uh, she, <laughs> she's, uh, it was in the Fantastic Four is Sue Storm. Miss Laurie Allen. Hubba hubba, what a dame. It's not all just for boys. <laughs> <laughs> um, did you guys ever watch the, the Fantastic Four? You know, Sue Richards, the Invisible Woman. So we had a really funny story about that because one day the director gave us a tape to listen to, you know, how we were doing. He was sort of giving us a report card, but it was before all the sound effects and all that stuff was put in and it was all mixed. And so anything that happens in an action cartoon just sounds like, uh, uh, read, get down from there. Uh, uh, I'm trying to uh, uh, get you. Anyway, it all sounded like we were constipated the entire series. <laughs> Uh, the other thing is I get to Once in a Blue Moon, well, I did get to uh, chase after Spongebob as Pearl the Whale and say, Yo, Spongebob, I love you! And that's it. Yeah. There's Enjoy. nothing like Thank interspecies you so much romance. For sticking around. Lori Allen, ladies and gentlemen, take a bow. Take two bows, please, actually. I'm a lonely man. Yes. Do you think a vertebrate and an invertebrate could make it together? <laughs> So, uh, folks, if you could address who you'd like to ask the question so they can run to the podium over there. Uh, you, sir, first. Yes, uh, I have a question for the two gentlemen who do Pinky and the Brain. Have you guys ever thought about doing an actual full-length movie? Oh, yeah. As a matter of fact, this is going to get Gary Owens to finance it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're looking you for know, investors so here tonight. I'm so glad you asked that question because we don't have Quiet, a star Quiet, Pinky. Either. I'm sorry, Dan. <laughs> It must be inordinately taxing to be such a boob. You have no idea. Uh, I don't, what do you know about a pinky and a brain movie? You know, honestly, Peter Hastings, who actually just... Yeah. Um, Jess, dude! Jess was just in the Country Bears movie. Who's that little bear? Right. Yeah. That's my big moment. Yeah, Peter Hastings, who uh, directed the Country Bears movie that's out now, um, was the guy that basically created Pinky and the Brain, and I think... With Tom Ruger. With Tom Ruger. Yes. Yeah. Thank you very much, Tom. Um, and, and, and from what I understand, actually, I saw Peter about a month ago, and he said he still has an idea for one. Whether or not it'll get made, of course, is anybody's guess, but uh, it's nice to see that people still remember us. Thank you very every much. Time, every time they do a... They've actually... Steven Spielberg has asked for not one but two screen tests through, through uh, DreamWorks for a, um, you know, a mouse movie. You know, and, and we think he's got Pinky in the Brain in the back of his mind, but... He, he, uh, every time that happens, he makes something else. He made, uh, what was it, what was it, uh, the one with the, the mouse hunt? Oh, yeah. And that was apparently off of a screen test to see if we could do a, a CGI pinky in the brain. And then the next time he did it, the, uh, uh, Stuart Little came Stuart about. Little. So, yeah. you know, we can't be too far behind, you know. <laughs> next one will be two little white mice in yeah. one movie. So this let's business hope. isn't big enough for that many mice. I don't mind telling you. I'm telling you, this is mouseism, pinky. Yes, it is. <laughs> We're being discriminated against. I don't give a rat's up. Uh, very sweet, very sweet. Uh, if I may impose on something that Maurice does for all of us in all the sessions every stinking day, and now he has an audience, so could you do a little of the Orson Welles outtake for us? Yeah. Are there any children under? Uh, yeah, not too dirty. Not too dirty. This is a comic book. Convention. That's true. It is. <laughs> no, the way Brain came about, the way I came up with the voice of Brain. 
I didn't know. Brain was designed after a guy named Tom Minton, who was a writer, and, and Pinky is designed it after Eddie Fitzgerald, his partner. I didn't know this. When I looked at the first sketch of Brain, he looked exactly, the model didn't change at all. I saw Orson Welles, and these guys all know. I have, I have this sort of OCD thing. I, I have to do this great outtake <laughs> tape of Orson Welles doing a frozen piece Every commercial. session. Orson Compulsive, Orson Compulsive Disorder. <laughs> so. It's this tape of Wells doing, in, like circa 1978, doing a frozen peas commercial in England, and oh it goes God. something <laughs> like this. <laughs> what, did you expect me to look like, Orson? <laughs> Get the prompter Now I gotta out. turn around again. <laughs> we know a remote farm in Lincolnshire where Mrs. Buckley lives. Every July, peas grow there. Do you really mean that? Yes, I'd start about a half second late, don't you? Don't you think you really want to say July over the snow? Isn't that the fun of it? If you could make it Orson Olmos when that shot disappears, I think it'll make... I think it's so nice that you see a snow-covered field and say every July, please go there. Get me a jury and show me how you can say in July and I'll go down on you. We know a little place in the American Far West where Charlie Briggs chops up the finest prairie-fed beef and tastes each... This is a lot of shit, you know that. <laughs> what is it you want in the depths of your ignorance? What is it you want? <laughs> Whatever it is you want, I can't deliver because I just don't see it. That was absolutely fine. It really was. And he walks off and takes his dog, and that's the end of the, the day. <laughs> Truncated. Yeah. Outtake the one-man show. Hopefully, he'll never do it for us again. Oh. I started doing cartoons when I first came to Hollywood as a kid. I think I was 21. And uh, as I said, I did a couple of things for Disney. I became Roger Ramjet in 65. Before that time, I was a writer for Jay Ward. Uh, Alan Burns, who created Mary Tyler Moore, was there at that time as a writer. A uh, whole group of wonderfully talented people. But the first voiceover I ever did on a cartoon was Roger Ramjet, which came out again as a DVD last month. And uh, during the putting together of this whole show, we would go in one night a month and record about 35 shows in a row. They were only five minute shows. And next door at Western Recorders and United Recorders were Frank Sinatra, Sammy Davis Jr., Dean Martin, Glenn Campbell, Leon Russell, all these great guys. And so when they'd go for a coffee break, I'd have them come in and do a voice on Roger Ramjet. So Sinatra may play farmer number one. You know, I've but his farmer Cuckoo number two. Cuckoo farming, baby. Let's do it, Jack. <laughs> yeah, right. So well, it, it, geez, I, I'll near. be the one-eyed snake, babe. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you are, certainly. The yeah, FMA. It is a little jinky winky. Oh, so that was the first cartoon, and uh, I've been so lucky. I can't tell you how lucky I've been in this in this wonderful world. It's like being a kid and being paid for something we all did as kids, Absolutely. and still do. And that's the beauty of it all, uh, the wonderful world of animated cartoons. Anyway, thank you for the wonderful comments. Thank you. I really thank appreciate you. that. Uh, we'll get to your questions. Sorry, it's taking so long here. The guys wanted me to mention this. Uh, Gary, we're, we have uh, the same agent, and Gary sits and regales us with these amazing stories. And, and one day he was telling us about Marilyn Monroe and this person and that person. And the guy in the office said, Gary, is there anyone you don't know? And he goes, well, uh, he goes, mom's Mabley. Well, moms and I had lunch. <laughs> At one time, I oh, wrote geez. jokes for moms maybe. There we go. You know the game Six Degrees of Kevin Bacon? It's zero yeah. degrees of Gary <laughs> Owen. Zero. There's, there's Bacon absolutely Bacon. nobody in between him and everyone. Yeah. Yeah. In the words of Mark Hamill, Obi-Wan Owens, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yeah, right. Yes, sir, who's your question for? Uh, this is for everyone on the panel right now. You guys teaming up is like the Justice League of cartoons. <laughs> Can I be Snapper Carr? <laughs> sorry. What's that, I'm sorry? Uh, my question was, how did you guys all just come about about, gain, about coming together? For this film, you mean? Yeah. You, <laughs> no, uh, all right, uh, just, all right. Fellow, Scott Zacharin, the head of the studio, was on a plane from Las Vegas. 
and Scott and I were developing an airplane-like movie, and um, Scott called me up and said, I'm on this plane with this guy named Jess Arnell, and he says he's a really good friend of yours. I go, yeah. He said, and he entertained half the plane. And I went, yeah. And he goes, he was really obnoxious, but really funny. I went, yeah. <laughs> You don't seem surprised. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he said, every animation friend of yours I meet, they're the most untapped talent, and this is Scott speaking, he should really come up here if he's here, I don't know. Truly the most untapped talent in the entertainment business because there's pound for pound, and I think you folks, you're the only folks who really know this. It's these guys right here. Yes, and I mean that. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. Uh, and as an example, Mr. Cummings, would you please go, go up and speak to these people here? And he's just looking at me like, what? <laughs> this man does trailers. This man he is... Does everything. He is everything. Yeah, he's... Uh, you don't want to do it? Come on, get up here. Come on, Jim. Check, check this out, check this Big out. trailer voice! Coming to a theater near you. <laughs> you know him. You love him. You can't live without him. He is Mark... Hamill, <laughs> Jess Harnell, Tom Kenny, Billy West, Roger, Ra Ra, Boom Boom, take a look at these rows. <laughs> and Laurie, Humana, Humana, Humana Allen. Starring in, we don't know the name of the movie. Comic book, the movie. It is. Yes. You picked it, basically. Oh, well, there you go. Comic book, the movie. <laughs> You're driving me crazy, but seriously. Oh, well, okay, well, that's it. Okay, Jim coming. <laughs> uh, I, I, I would just like to add to what's already been said about that, that, that you know, you ask how we all came together. That thing about the, the plane is really true, because I had taken my medication, and I was in a really good mood that day. <laughs> But, um, but the truth of the matter is that, that when you do this stuff, um, which we're all fortunate enough to do, you really realize that it, it, it's such a team. There's, like with on-camera actors, a lot of the time there's backbiting and there's a lot of competitiveness, and there's really none of that in voiceover. It, it really is like a lot of people, except Billy, who get along beautifully and, and just help each other out. Like this thing today with the movie, we're doing it. These guys had, had the courtesy and, and the good nature to come down here to San Diego, basically to help us out and to see you guys, because without you, we wouldn't have a job and we really love you guys for that and I want you to know that. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Wait, just Roger, let you know, I always, I always wanted to do voice trailers because they pay a shitload of money, but, uh, but I can't do them with a straight face. I've tried it. It's like, you know, um, no, 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 it's, it's always, it's always, it's always in a world gone mad. The man, it's always gone mad. One man. It's always one man. <laughs> Time is running out. Time is always running out. <laughs> oh, right. God. Or if it's a foreign movie, the trailer says, It was the summer that a boy became a man. <laughs> <laughs> right. All of you uh, who is your question for, please? Uh, I'll take the entire cast for 200. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and the answer is? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, are you? Are you, any of you gentlemen afraid? And ladies, sorry. Uh, afraid that the authorities gonna find out you're just being paid a, a life just to uh, have fun and all that? <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're gonna make you dress up in a suit and work at Starbucks soon. I'm sure. It, <laughs> Z seriously though. Shut the doors. Going down, baby. No. <laughs> Shut the doors and start pumping in the poison gas. This guy knows too much. <laughs> he tried to be nice. <laughs> Take it, take it. It is an amazing scam. Uh, it's, it's, yeah. it's the, the only time I've ever been lucky in my life. The, the actual question is, there seemed to have been a, a glut of cartoon movies this summer, and last summer most seemed to fail and then succeeded, except for Jimmy Neutron, I heard, and Shrek. Uh, do you see that the, the studios are trying to force feed cartoons down everyone's throat at the main theaters, or should it just be more video There's releases? always gotta be one guy, isn't there? <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry. What's well, Tom just did the Powerpuff Girls movie because he is the mayor of Townsville. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. So why don't you answer that question? Uh, uh, by the way, I declare today to be official random audience day here in San Diego. Thank you. So once again, the day is saved thanks to the rabble. <laughs> yeah, you know, I... 
I don't know. What do you think? I mean, some movies do good, some movies do bad. I mean, when Shrek Shrek makes a makes a truckload of money, they're they're, they're gonna. Yeah, but they know. don't use us. Oh no, never. So I mean, we could do without that in the cartoon movies. I want to be in them, and you want to be in them. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Rob Paulson wants to say you something. You know, I have to say that one of the I did a Jimmy Neutron. I worked on Jimmy Neutron. And Debbie Derryberry, who is Jimmy Neutron, is in Debbie this movie Derry too. Derry. She's in it too. And um, I um I played Carl, Jimmy Jimmy's best friend. Oh. And. And the nice thing about that was the movie, as you, thank you for mentioning that, it did very well, it made a lot of money, and it was nominated for an Oscar, which was really nice. But, but it had really, in the lead character roles, there were no celebrity talent, which is nice for us, because um, that's one of the things that we continually compete with, and it's difficult yeah. to compete with, you know, the panache of the whole face vibe, you know? And so it was really nice for them, being Nickelodeon and Paramount, to sort of keep us in and it sort of proved that, you know, you could still have a movie that makes some money that people like, and it doesn't all have to be, you know, Mel Gibson and, and Eddie. But and then there's the Powerpuff nice. Girls movie, which to date has made upwards of $10,000. Yeah, baby. Gentlemen. That's the one I'm in. Now I'd like to go over no here as Tony Curtis. This young lady right over here. First of all, I'd like to say thank you to all of you for sharing your voice talents with us. I'm sure uh, me and much of the audience is very appreciative of all the hard work you do for us. We love you guys. We love you right back. Thank uh, you. Come home with and, us. And uh, my, second, my second point or question is addressed to all of you. How would any of us try to go about getting into the voiceover industry? Doors closed. Sorry. No? Okay. <laughs> okay, next question. Oh, sorry. <laughs> First of all, become a huge international movie star. <laughs> then say, I like cartoons, I would like to do one. And they'll say, sure. For my kid. <laughs> for my kid. It's always, it's always for their kids. They want to leave a legacy for their kids. You know, guys, you know, big, big action stars make movies where they just cut people yeah. up to pastrami with machine guns and they go, but I want to leave something for my kid. You know, so. <laughs> this is, uh, this does it, want, Gary, do you want to take this as far as oh, getting into yeah. the field? The best way is to make a tape that's under two minutes long and uh, submit it to all the agents. There's a whole list of agents in the uh, Hollywood uh, Los Angeles telephone directory. SAG, also. SAG too, yeah. Either, Either way. way. Uh, there are a lot of ways to get in the business. If you're doing different voices, like these great stars here, uh, make a separation with each one. Try to say something clever. Uh, if you're emulating another voice of someone, put it on there, too. Uh, but just make it the best you can, the very best, and send it to an agent. That's the way to do it. A true voiceover-related story that I swear happened to me, and I, this is a great, great story. I was at Disney World in Florida some years ago. <laughs> you know, Jimmy knows this one. I, I was in Disney World with my mom. I had taken her there just so she could have a little bit of fun, and we're walking around, and this was at the height of the whole Animaniacs thing, and everybody's walking around with Animaniacs T-shirts, right? So my mom, being a mom, every time we'd see somebody in the shirt, would go, oh, go tell them. <laughs> you know, go tell them it's you. They'll love that. I'm like, no, mom, I really don't want it to. She said, oh, okay. Oh, go tell him. He's so, you know. Okay, well, anyway, we're one line for something or other, and there's this very, very cute little boy, you know? A very, very cute little guy, must have been 10 years old, and he's standing about five feet away from me, and she goes, oh, you have to tell him. He'll be so happy. He looks bored. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so I go over, and I go, I go, hey, how you doing? And I knew right then, because he looked at me like I was a bug, right? He goes, <laughs> and he goes, hi. And I go, you like the Animaniacs? And he goes, yeah, <laughs> you know, and I go, uh, I go, well, I go, which one is your favorite? Who do you like the best? And he goes, wacko, why? And I go, well, you know, it's kind of funny that you, you say that because I, I do his voice, you know? And he looks at me and he goes, yeah, so do I. <laughs> Actually, this kid's name was Eric Cartman, and he was a son of a bitch, you guys. <laughs> no, so I look at him, and I go, uh, I go, no, no, no. I go, actually, I, I, no, I really do. I do it on the show, you know? And he goes, no, you don't. <laughs> and I go, yeah, I, I, I do, you know? And uh, it hadn't occurred to me yet how absurd this conversation was becoming. <laughs> and he goes, he goes, well, they record that in California. And I said, oh, I, I, I live in California. And he goes, uh-huh. And I go, wait a minute. 
And I go, look, California, right? And he looks at me, and I'm not kidding. He goes, oh, yeah. He goes, you live in California, so you must do his voice, right? So now I'm like scratching my head looking at this little bastard. <laughs> and I go, I go, well, I go, look at this then, right? And I had a business card at the time that had a picture of me with Wacko, because that was like one of the first cartoons I did, and I was really stoked about it. So I had a, <laughs> right? So I go, I go, look at this, you know? And he goes, oh yeah. He goes, it's a picture of him. You must be the guy. <laughs> right? So now I'm like, listen, kid, I'm going to tear your head off in two seconds. But, <laughs> but I didn't. I didn't do that. I, I, I kept my wits about me. And I go, uh, I go well, I go, okay, what, what's it going to take for you to believe me? Now my mom's looking at me going, oh, God, I wish I'd never said anything. <laughs> and I go, well, what, what is it going to take for you to believe me, man? And he goes, well, let me hear you do it. Right? So I very rarely get nervous, but I was really <laughs> nervous now. <laughs> So I look at this little, this little, you know, guy. <laughs> and I go, uh, I go, well, you know, it sure is great to be here at Disney World, isn't it? And he goes, you don't even sound like <laughs> <laughs> And I go, I go, well, I go, let me hear, hear you do it then. And he, you know, he goes, oh, hello, nice. And I go, well, I guess you do do it better than me. <laughs> This is, this is true voiceover star. Uh, person over there, please. Uh, this is addressed to all of you. I just wanted to know, what was each one of you, your first thing that you did, and what inspired you to get involved in voiceover? Uh, you want to go down the line? Inspect, oh. Inspector Gadget, I played the chief, and coming this fall... Oh, yeah. Coming this fall will be a new series called Gadget and the Gadgetinis. I no longer play the chief, but they've seen fit to just toss me a little bone and have me play Inspector Gadget. So I'll be the new voice of Inspector Gadget. You got promoted. Yeah. That's a scoop. We didn't even know that yet. That's great. Tommy? Oh, uh. Oh, do the voice. Gadget. Gadget. Do the voice. What is this, a riot? Well, Penny, we've got to go and capture Dr. Clock. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't have Brain the dog anymore, and I refuse to be seen with a mouse, but I have two new little friends called the Gadget Teenies, and they figure very prominently in the show, make sure you watch. <laughs> yeah. That is the best Matthew Broderick I have ever heard. It's incredible. <laughs> and uh, my, I, I came from more of a background of, of stand-up comedy and, and sketch acting and stuff, but my first uh, cartoon that I ever booked was uh, a yellow call called Heifer on a show called Rocco's uh, Modern Life. <laughs> and I was so thrilled because I had always been obsessed with cartoons. I, 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 I didn't want to be on camera. You know, I, I was on camera because I couldn't get into cartoons. <laughs> Uh, as for me, I, I, like I said, I guess I started as a jingle singer, and the first thing I ever did was I did, did a bunch of voices for Splash Mountain. Have you guys been on that ride at Disneyland? Yes, yes, yes. I'm, if you go on that again, I'm Br'er Rabbit, and I'm Br'er Bear, and an alligator, and a duck, and a goose, and all kinds of crap. But, but then what I did That's after that... That's your personal life. Yeah, don't, let's not bring that into it. Uh, but I, I, then what happened actually, actually after that was that they were looking to replace uh, Roger Rabbit. You guys like Roger Rabbit, you know? Yes. And so jeepers, I went out for that job and got it, which was super, you know. So I started doing Roger, and from there, the first cartoon ever I ever did was Darkwing Duck with none other than Darkwing Duck. That would be Jim Cummings. And I remember, seriously, now you gotta understand, I was sort of living in a rock and roll vacuum and I'd never come across people like myself, my people, as it were. And uh, I was sitting next to Jim Cummings doing this show and I went, whoa. Um, the first I think big cartoon I did was Ninja Turtles. I did, um, I did uh, uh, Raphael. Yeah. And, um, um, Shredder, you tin-faced geek, get back here and taste cold turtle steel. <laughs> yeah. So uh, that was probably, I did others before that, but that was the first uh, big one. And thank you for paying my mortgage with action figures. <laughs> Jim Cummings. I'm totally unfit for anything but this. <laughs> no, I, actually, I remember I was a little kid and I would see uh, the uh, Paul Winchell show. And, uh, and I remember that, yeah, you know. 
And uh, I remember uh, the Jack Benny show, the Mel Blanc was on that show, and, and, and my dad says, you know who this guy is? And I go, yeah, he's, a, he's not a real Mexican, is he, Dad? No, no, he's... <laughs> No, son, uh, that's Bugs Bunny and everything. And then I, and I'm listening to him, and he had this bit. Of, Jack said something about it. You, you probably wrote it, Gary. But it was, uh, what is your name? Si. And it, si. Do, you, do you say anything other than that? Si. You know, and I, and I realized that then, then you see Paul Winchell, and he's sitting there talking to himself, uh, which is, of course, Jerry, who's holding Jerry Mahoney on one hand and Knucklehead Smith on the other. And I'm thinking, I do that at home for free. And so uh, I just, I actually, I knew I was going to either be a, a singer or an actor or a, a, a something, to, not a dancer. <laughs> and, uh, and I used to get kicked out of classes for, you know, uh, doing dolphin sounds and everything. And, I, and <laughs> then you come to find out, they'll pay you for that. And, and so here I am. Yeah, that's really it. Yeah. Jim Cummings. Jim, Jim, what was your first show, though? Darren Norris, ladies and gentlemen, Darren. Yes. I'm still dressed in black, baby. Uh, the, uh, the first cartoon I ever did was, uh, I think I was Commander Og from Planet Zorgo on 20,000 Leagues in Space, which is nothing, believe me. But the first uh, big show I ever did, which was really not animation, it was uh, with the lovely Maurice Lamar. It was a show called The Jimp Channel. Uh, oh <laughs> I was Brock Hammond, uh, the actor. Yeah, you, uh, that's it. Brock, Brock, we found a clue. No, Timmy, clues are round. Uh, <laughs> so I, I guess I have an affinity for playing uh, people who aren't really bright. Uh, and uh, uh, Cosmo the fairy on Fairly Odd Parents would be in that same vein. Yes, uh huh. Not real smart. Started out like this, kind of like Phil, kind of smarmy and cheesy. And then he grew into this. And then he fired the pen skin and. <laughs> then we've done that already today, too. Anyway, that's my story, right? Hey. Karen Norris, Jim, you want to say something? I got one more thing, because I, I just re I really should tell you that you guys this. Um, I was working at a video store in Anaheim Hills, and I, I made a demo tape, which is what you're supposed to do, like Gary said. Um, and I sent it out to this guy uh, named Don Bluth, because a customer knew this guy. And I, Don Bluth, whatever. You know, that's how dim I was. And, uh, and he called me back and said, well, you don't stink. But um, I'm not doing anything, so I'll hold on to this tape. And, um, you know, if anybody's casting for anything, and uh, I'll... I'll I'll let them know and I'll pass it around and well it sounded like you know don't call me and boy am I not gonna call you <laughs> but he actually did uh, give it to uh, this this guy and uh, his name was Frank Brandt and Caroline Hay and the story is that I got my very first audition and I got the job and they were doing two shows a week which was about two shows a week more than I ever did and I quit my job and it lasted like a year and a half and uh, it was the greatest thing in the world and it wasn't animation, but it was Dumbo Circus, and guess what? <laughs> Dumbo is in the house. Yeah. yeah. Our close personal friend, you know her, you love her, you can't live without her. She's not only Dumbo, she was Baby Roth on, on the, uh, the Muppet Babies. She was little gummy gummy, she was a little gummy bear. And her name is Katie Lee, and guess what? Hey. She's right here, hey. Katie Lee. very sweet to say that about me, I think. <laughs> They're really funny guys. And there's no girls. What even happened to Lori? She's doing the movie. She's under the They're table. They're about to be doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Hi Somebody had yes. to say it. Well, that's why I'm not up here. <laughs> you are now. <laughs> Far out. You guys are awesome. You too, Thank you. Uh, I was Brian Panade on The Tick. And, um, or Brian Pinhead, as we like to. Thank you very much. And on that subject, this is Arthur from the tick. That's right, Arthur from the tick. Um, I basically spent the whole show saying, um, I don't know, Tick, I don't think that's such a good idea. Yeah, and I was definitely the sewer urchin. Yeah, very bad idea, Tick. Oh, very dangerous. Oh, oh yeah, very bad. My very first job, though, and real quick story. I don't know if you guys know, the Jetsons, they only did 26 episodes when they first did it because it was against the Flintstones, and it was canceled after the first season. And about, what, like 12 years ago? Man. Cancellation sucks, Bonnie. <laughs> <laughs> so they brought the Jetsons back, uh, like, what is it, 25 years later or something? And I was Nick Nova, Judy Jetsons' boyfriend. And 
but all, they brought the original cast back. And the youngest person in the cast was like 55, 60, who was Rosie the Robot, I think. Penny Singleton was Jane. She was about 76, and she had dentures. Oh, Jean Van yeah, Jean Van yeah. Penny Singleton was like, the dentures would clip clop. Uh, Mel Blanc was there, and, oh. and he, you know. Janet Waldo. Yeah, but there was oxygen tanks. And, you know, I was the youngest guy there, and they're literally, they had an ambulance at all times, and I was like, oh, this is really scary. I hate voice over. <laughs> Mike. All right, Gary Owens. Gee, well, Bob, me and Astro are going down to the old folks' home. <laughs> Isn't this fun just to hear these great voices, all these great... <laughs> this is marvelous. Well, uh, we're going to bring uh, Scott up here because we're going to start doing the movie here. We, you've slept with all of us to get the role, by the way, and I thank you. You were really great. Um, <laughs> let's have a nice hand for everyone. Maurice LaMarche, ladies and gentlemen. Yay. Tom Kinney. Whoa. <laughs> He's Jess still Arnell, who is Ricky? Rob Paulson, the effervescent Jim Cumming, and the legend. Let's get a stand and O, Mr. Gary Owens. Of course, also Billy West, who is backstage prepping his role.